today. Scripture brings us to the book of 2 Samuel. Now, we're going to look at chapter 1 today, but before we do, I want to kind of set the table a little bit. And that is, the book of 2 Samuel takes place immediately following the events of 1 Samuel. So one leads right into the other. If you've ever seen Rocky and Rocky 2, if you you know, watch those back to back, you'll see how that flows. That's the same way that uh, first and second Samuel flows, just one right into the other. In first Samuel chapter 31, we see that Saul has died and the account of his death. That's important because of the account that we get here. And then in second Samuel chapter one, we see David getting the news of what happened right there. So I have this chapter broken down into two sections. The first 16 verses, I have that as titled, David Learns of Israel's Defeat uh, and of Saul and Jonathan. So David Learns of Israel's Defeat and of Saul and Jonathan. The account, uh, the narrative takes up that after Saul uh, had died, David returned from the events of 1 Samuel chapter 30, and that was the pursuing after the Amalekites that had raided Ziklag and took all their women and how David and his men went and destroyed him and got everyone back. David has come back from that battle. The events of Saul's battle are now brought, the news of that brought unto David by a young man who uh, reveals himself to be an Amalekite. Now, David and his men went to fight against the Amalekites, and Saul and his men were fighting against the Philistines. But this particular Amalekite was evidently um, there uh, at uh, Mount Gilboa where this battle had taken place, and he brought, he was there for the spoils of war. So this young man brings the news and property of Saul because, again, he had raided the battlefield and Saul, 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 S-A-W, Saul, S-A-U-L, on the battlefield dead, and he took the his crown, essentially, and his signet, that which showed who he was, took it off his dead body, and then brought it unto David. Now, he gives the account here that Saul had fallen on his sword, but he didn't die. And so, therefore, he beckoned him over and asked him to kill him, and then so he did. That's the account that he gives unto David. Now, this goes contrary to the account in 1 Samuel chapter 31 and 1 Chronicles chapter 14, I believe it is. Uh, In both of those, uh, Saul kills himself. And this Malachite, I think it's pretty evident what is happening here, and that is he, through the spoils of war, comes upon Saul and Jonathan and them before the Philistines do, and he sees who it is, and he takes merchandise from him to prove of his death and then heads out to see David. Saul has been hounding David for over 10 years. And so in this young man's mind, he's thinking that David is going to be pleased with the death of his oppressor. And so what he does is he embellishes his story a little bit. Instead of Saul just killing himself, he says, well, I'll do him a favor here and and, and it'll make it look like I helped him. And so therefore, He's thinking that David is going to reward him for killing his oppressor, but he underestimated David and misjudged the situation. David did not hate Saul. David loved Saul. Saul hated David, but David didn't hate Saul. He saw Saul, and it's so odd saying it, but he saw him as God's anointed and that it would be a sin to stretch forth thine hand against God's anointed. So the news, he brings news to him. David and his men just weep and lament. This is obviously probably not the um, reaction that he expected, this young Amalekite. So they they weep, and they uh, the next day after that, he calls him back over, and he says that, and that's found in verse number 
uh, 13. And David, so they weeped, wept, and mourned and fasted until even. And then they, it says, and David said unto the young man and told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am a son of a stranger in Amalekite. David said unto him, How wast thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's, Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. And that to me, that's just like gangster almost. Yeah, that's what I that's what I had in my mind that David's like, who, who you who you are? You don't you don't know that you don't do this? Get him. You know, I, I it, and I, you know, David had reason to do what he did. A couple reasons: he wasn't just being mean. Number one, he was avenging the Lord's anointed. Number two, he was doing what God had told Saul to do before, and that was kill all the Amalekites. So David was not sinning in that sense. Uh, his reason was because he stretched forth his hand against his anointed, but he was doing still what God had commanded Saul to do in the first place. So David was. You know, David wasn't wrong in what he did, but that just, that image in my mind, phew, get him, and then he gets him. It just seemed, you know, very, uh, you know, gangsta to me. <laughs> this is silly. Anyway, all right, moving on to the second part, and that is David's lamentation. The remainder of this chapter, verses 17 through 20, what, 7? 17 through 27 is David this essentially an ode unto unto Saul and unto Jonathan and the Israelites in the battle that took their lives. It is a lamentation expressing this great sorrow and respect unto Saul and Jonathan. Because you have to you have to understand this wasn't their first battle. Saul and Jonathan, they did earn some respect and uh, again, if you don't respect the man, you respect the office. And David is instilling that unto the people. But David uh, was showing great grace. And that is something that I think you take a, take from this, these 10 verses or whatever, that David is just showing such grace unto a man that persecuted him so much. He's uh, really giving honor unto Saul, but the theme of this lamentation is found in verses 19. You see there, how are the mighty fallen? You see that phrase three times. You see it in verse number 25. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of battle? Verse 27, how are the mighty fallen? So I want you to take this from it. Number one, when Saul came into the kingdom, he was described as being head and shoulders above everybody else. And then at the end of his reign, the night before his death, he has fallen prostrate at, the, at a witch's feet. And then the next day he falls in battle. Saul began way up here, but Saul ended way down here. And it was all due to pride. You know, pride will uh, uh, destroy you. It certainly did certainly did Saul because it's his pride that caused him in large part to make the bad decisions in which he did. Uh, so uh, just if you take anything from the life of Saul, I, I hope it's this. Don't get too big for your britches. You know, don't listen to the heaps and the accolades that people put upon you and think you're something. Take heed lest you fall. Um, Saul is a cautionary tale. He truly is. The, the life in which he lived, the, the end in which he experienced, it's truly a cautionary tale for you and I. We see such a vast difference between Saul who began prideful and then was brought to be humble and David who was humble and then God exalted him. See all those lessons uh, spelled out over and over and over throughout the books, book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom that God has given us. So that's going to do it. Second Samuel chapter one. Um, I hope this has been a help to you. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.